everybody, welcome to Kill Zarek's Book. Time for another movie review. Tonight's movie, Red Right Hand. Stop me if you heard this. All right, I'm just gonna read it. You tell me if you've heard something like this before. Cash, I guess that's the guy's name. We all know Cash is trying to live an honest and quiet life, but when Big Cat forces him back into her services, he proves capable of anything to protect the town and the only family he has left. Right? I mean, it's like the baker, the butcher, the candlestick maker, the bee, bee collector. <laughs> it's all those. Uh, what was the other one? The bricklayer. Yes. So, I don't know if it's the same kind of thing. It just sounds very similar. But in this movie, we do have Andy McDowell, Orlando Bloom, Garrett Dillahunt, um, uh, James Lafferty. One Tree Hill, baby. All right. All right. Scott Hayes. I kind of recognize him. I don't know, there's some other familiar faces. I don't know, I'm intrigued. Only 5.3 on IMDb, 1,515 people rated it so far, hour and 51 minutes long. Let's do it, James Lafferty. I didn't even know he was in it. Orlando Bloom, and it's the next version. I don't know, it could be that, you know, what I'm predicting is this guy has some ex-military training where he can take people down and he goes into being a gardener or something like that. He lives off the grid and then he's got to come back and use his own talents to save his family that he only knew. All that kind of stuff. Could be wrong. That's why we watch. Right? So stick around. I'll let you know. Hey everybody. Read the credits of Red Right Hand and I have to say now that I see the title again they didn't spend a lot of time on that. It was very brief on why it's... I know why, but it's like very subtle. An interesting name for um, the movie based on what I just watched. But it works. It's cool. I get it. Um, it and I also will jump out right up front and say I was completely wrong. This is not like the beekeeper or, you know, the, the bricklayer. He's not an ex-military person that comes out of hiding. What he is, Orlando Bloom is our man, right? Um, he's the one with the family. He's got uh, this, uh, a little family. He's the uncle, right? He's a fun uncle. Um, uncle. <laughs> um, anyway, he but he ran with the, the bad crowd. So the bad crowd is like the kingpin in this little, I don't know what kind of town. I don't know, Kentucky town or something like that. I don't know. Seems something like that. That Annie McDowell runs. So she's the kingpin of all this, like drug runner. I don't know, but she does illegal stuff, right? And she's got a whole bunch of guys to do the bad deeds for it, but definitely does some peddling of drugs. Um, and it's got this, I don't know, got this gang and got, you know, this big house and stuff like that and got everybody in her pocket from the sheriff. Anyway, so she tries to take the, the farm that Orlando Bloom's family is on, so his sister, um, her, his brother-in-law and his niece, right? And, and she's trying to get him to come back to work. He used to work for her wants him to come back to work so that they can earn the farm back but you know she kind of gets greedy and doesn't want him she, you do a couple of jobs for me we're all good um real quick because the name came up james lafferty right i was really excited one tree hill i get to see him in a movie i don't know if i've seen him in anything else maybe one or two um it was a cameo man it was it was a waste he uh i thought he did great uh, you know i only know him uh, from one tree hill nathan and uh, I was excited to see him, and he played like a, I know I'm sidebarring here, but like a, a drug dealer. Um, he had like tattoos, like Post Malone underneath his eyes and stuff like that, and he's doing acid and stuff. And I thought, I mean, for the limited role that I saw, I thought he did a great job of not being Nathan um, and being believable. So hopefully that, you know, people catch that and he gets to be in more. I didn't know if he retired or what, but... Great job. Uh, so, sorry, I just wanted to jump off there. Anyway, all right, Garen Dillahunt, he is the preacher, um, the priest, the, the head of the church, whatever church they go to, which I know I'm going all over the place here, but hear me out, right? I watch a lot of faith-based films. This is not considered a faith-based film, but, you know, I don't know. Now, I'm, I'm, I've talked about this before and said, you know, what films are faith-based? Like this one, he goes to church, they, you know, he's involved in everything. He preaches the word of God throughout the movie. But it wouldn't, it's not made by one of the faith-based movie-making companies. But there's a lot of faith in it. So is it a faith-based? I don't know. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll stop saying that word anymore. You know? 
But I do think that there's a stark difference between what I'm talking about, the films that I see, and this one. This one is just like an action movie, drama, with faith in it, whereas the faith-based movies are faith-based movies with action and drama in it. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so what I'll say about this is it's, it's a little bit predictable. I think there are some aha moments or surprises, but I felt, you know, you knew where it was going the whole time. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I wasn't too bored with it. Um, there are some glaring holes, specifically at the end. Um, but uh, I don't know, I'll jump into that. But I, a fun movie and a little bit long. Uh, what did I say? An hour and fifty-four, an hour and fifty-seven minutes. A little long for me. Would have liked to cut it down a little bit. They didn't need it to be that long. But uh, for fun, um, but not terribly over the top exciting. There you go. I like all the actors in it. I didn't think Annie McDowell played the... Not that... I don't know. I don't see her as the, the drug kingpin in a, a Kentucky town or whatever town they're in. Um, but Dilla Hunt and, and um, Orlando Bloom were fine. Like I said, James Lafferty nailed his piece. They should have gave him more screen time. Um, and that's about it. So check it out. It's, it's what you think. It's really... There's not many surprises there. And I, I kind of laid out anything that would be a surprise. So if you like any of that stuff that I said, this might be for you. But don't be expected to. You're not going to knock your socks off, but you have fun. All right, before I go, real quick, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Two questions real quick. Red boxes might have been. Anyway, um, yeah, Team Kentucky. Oh, my gosh. This was a Kentucky-based film. How about that? Dude, I, I spent too much time in this chair watching that screen. But with that said, um, I just want to talk about the, the things. So how do they just go on living life? You know, at the end, Orlando Bloom and whoever, like, really. I mean, body count, crazy in this film. And he's to blame for a lot of it, and he's just free. Like, there's nothing wrong that he did. Okay, all right. One. Two. In the final scene, we see him driving up to, to bring takeout food to his niece. I get the impression that, what, she live alone now? And he still lives in the cabin? Um, I didn't, I don't know. That's Maybe not, maybe I, I got the wrong impression. Maybe he just ran out to get food and brought it back for them, and they all live together, which would make more sense. Um, but instead, they come back with, like, takeout food. Might have been patty melts from the restaurant. That could have been it. I didn't know if he said anything or I did. I stopped paying attention. Um, but he, you know, it was take up. So I was like, "What the heck?" I get the whole, you know, connection there. If it was a patty mount from whatever restaurant that they were going to, but otherwise, it, I have to see. That's it. So now maybe the second point isn't that big. But anyway, that's it. Um, I, I'm at a six for this one. I think. Yeah. There was nothing, nothing bad about it to drop it to a five, but there was nothing great about it to take it to a seven. But it's a good six to watch when you got nothing else going on and you're in the mood for this type of movie. I'm Ramblin'. Thanks for tuning in. Kimmel's Irish Pub.